What is up everybody? Chris here and I thought I would just bring you a little bit of knowledge and tutorial and my own experience from doing a little bit of video editing and audio editing uh, to make your videos sound a lot better. So here we go. All right, let's get started. As you can see, I have two audio tracks up here. They were recorded at the same time by two different microphones. The first one is a USB microphone, uh, the Blue Yeti. It's a condenser microphone. And the second one is a Shure SM57, which is a dynamic microphone. Now, uh, the condenser microphone tends to pick up a lot more background noise, while the dynamic microphone is more focused in the range that it picks up. So I kind of wanted to show you uh, the differences between them and that these, uh, these techniques and effects work for both types of microphones. And really, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'll be going into a little bit of detail when I go over to Audacity, which is a free program. You can do all these, uh, these effects in. But I kind of want to show you in real time what these effects do and how they uh, change and conform the sound. So let's go with the Blue Yeti first. And I will go ahead and play a little bit and then show you uh, the effects added in. <laughs> So that should be a good indication of uh, how well these uh, these effects work and change the sound. Boy, it, it sounded good to begin with, but these just drastically changed it. And now I'm going to go with the dynamic microphone, which I'll let you take a listen. It is more uh, f uh, flat. It has a lot, a lot less background noise, if any at all. So I'll just go ahead and let you listen. Let me turn these off real quick. So that should give you a good idea about how well these effects work, and, and I'll be showing you how to do these in a free software called uh, Audacity, so I'll see you there. So now let's begin with Audacity. Uh, Audacity is a free program, so there's no excuse for you to not try these and help make your music sound better, at least your instruments. So let's get started. Um, well, first of all, let me go ahead and point out that you see these little peaks in the waveforms where they kind of go off the area that's what you call clipping and clipping is bad clipping is that <laughs> sound whenever you have a really loud sound and we don't want that in our in our music so let's take a listen <laughs> Yeah, it gets a little bit distorted, so we're going to go ahead and fix that by adding a compressor to here. Now, um, I would say 12 is a good threshold point uh, to start out with. You're going to have to do a lot of uh, trial and error 
with um with audacity that's just a it's not as user friendly as most but it's free and it has all the basic tools you need so uh, we're just gonna work with it but 12 is a is a good point I would start out with I don't touch the noise floor I leave it at 20 I raise the the ratio to 2.5 for this instance uh, which seems to be a good ratio and I leave the attack and decay times alone so let's see what it does look at the peaks real quick and look how most of them if not all of them have a uh, have kind of scrunched in and no longer touching the outlines. That is good. We want that. That means there's no clipping whatsoever. That means we're going to have a clean and really nice sound. So next thing we want to do is go to equalization. And um, you can uh, do several things with EQ. And in all honesty, since this is just the violin, my violin recording, and I don't have a backtrack, I'm not going to mess with the EQ very much. But what I will do is uh, show you a little trick. And it's a, it's a curve on here called 100 Hertz Rumble. And basically what that does is it, it's, it's a high-pass filter that gets rid of the low rumbling noises that tend to uh, be around a lot of microphones. And this helps... Uh, get rid of that sound. It won't get rid of all the background noise and all the rumble, but it does help out quite a bit. Once you have that, you can always mess with different types of EQ, but unless uh, something's severely lacking, I just say leave it. But that's your call to make. Uh, the next thing that I want to go over is uh, this thing called G verb, which is reverb. And. Um, these are all the settings. I'll, I'll kind of go a little bit more into detail with this uh, since uh, this is a little bit more complicated setting up compared to the others. So room size doesn't really matter in all honesty. You can have a big room or a small room, but I like a little smaller room because I don't want to sound like I'm in a cathedral or a big concert area. So 67 to about 85, 90 works really well to me. Um, reverb time, I recommend around two to three because any more than about four or five just tends to get very, very long-winded. There's just a cacophony of sounds that go on and there's a bunch of echoes. So we don't want all that rumbling around and taking away from the experience of music. So uh, we'll leave that about two to three. Uh, damping and input bandwidth, I honestly don't touch. So, I mean, you can mess with them. I don't touch them. Uh, dry signal level, this starts at negative 70. You want to bring this between 7 and 1 decibels. And that's a good uh, dry signal level I found. Early reflection level is basically the echoes of the, uh, of the reverb. So you don't want this to any of the extremes. You want to keep it within a good solid level. A really good point I found is around 27 to 29. It works out really well for me. Uh, for tail level, I normally leave, just leave this alone. So let's go ahead and add these. So it's crunched down the the, the waveforms, as you can see. And w basically, um, what reverb does, it helps out not only with the, the sound of it, but it also helps get rid of uh, certain frequencies and cancels them out. So, for example scratchy sound coming from my bow whenever I play the violin. This helps uh, kind of cancel that noise out that you can easily hear in uh, normal recordings. So let's go ahead and take a listen. That sounds really good for freeware and those are normally the tricks and uh, techniques I use to help make my violin sound a little bit better on uh, YouTube so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you got something out of it and until then I'll see you guys later